Indian horse film analysis by Abdul Al Talal. Introduction to Indian Horse. Indian Horse is a drama film released on September 15, 2017, and directed by Stefan Campanelli. The main characters in Indian Horse are Saul Indian Horse, Naomi, Father Quinney, Father Gaston Levitoyer, Virgil, and Fred Kelly. Sladen Peltier, Forrest Goodlock, and Ajua Kapashise all play Saul. Edna Meratawabi is Naomi, Saul's grandmother who risked her life to save Saul. Michael Murphy played Father Quinney, the principal of St. Jerome's that allowed Saul to play hockey after some reluctance. Michel Huzman played Father Gaston Levitoyer, a priest at St. Jerome's who introduced Saul to hockey and at first seemed to show unconditional liking towards Saul. Michael Lorenzoc played Fred Kelly, Saul's adoptive father, allowing him to leave St. Jerome's for a better life. Will Stronghart played Virgil, Fred Kelly's youngest son and Saul's greatest ally. Indian Horse Plot Saul's brother Benjamin dies from the chronic sickness, leading to Saul's parents abandoning Saul and Naomi. For Saul and Naomi to survive the harsh weather conditions, they decide to go where Naomi's relative lives, until Naomi eventually dies and Saul is captured and sent to St. Jerome's residential school. Saul experienced racism, trauma, abuse, and the joy of hockey all at the same time at St. Jerome's. This is until Fred Kelly allowed Saul to leave St. Jerome's, attend a proper school, play hockey with other indigenous people, and live with a nice family. Saul then goes to a higher league in Toronto, which he later leaves due to anti-indigenous racism. After leaving Toronto, he develops an alcohol addiction and finds himself in a mental hospital. It's the theme of racism and prejudice in Indian Horse. The plot, lighting, symbols, music, and sound effects all help portray and emphasize the theme of racism and prejudice. First, the racist goal of St. Jerome to assimilate indigenous children into white Christians is very clear to the audience. For instance, when Saul is kidnapped from Naomi, when Father Quinn changes Lonnie's name to Aaron, when the nuns rub Saul's skin in a hard manner, and when the nuns teach indigenous children the beliefs of Christianity. Second, sound music is played with emphasized sounds of indigenous children crying and suffering from undergoing harsh racism in St. Jerome. Saul also deals with a lot of racism when playing with white opponents and with white teammates. Sad music is also played with emphasized sounds of the white crowds booing, wooing, shouting insults, and throwing red-skinned toy figures. Saul visualized these toy figures as Rebecca Wolf lying dead on the floor, further emphasizing the racism that was undergoing St. Jerome's. These sound effects and music are used to show the racism that the crowd had against Saul. Additionally, sad music is played when Saul walks to Toronto, receiving hard stares from white people and policemen, showing the racism that white people in Toronto had towards indigenous people. Lastly, dark lighting is often used to symbolize fear. On the two different occasions that Team Moose got beaten up by the white men and saw revisiting St. Jerome's, a dark setting was used to show fear of Team Moose and indigenous children in these racist and dark times of their life. Saul. Saul is the protagonist of this film, going through the separation of his family, residential school, racism from hockey, and the creation of a brotherhood. Saul is portrayed in this film as an indigenous little boy, teenager, and man who experiences a lot of fear through racism. The plot. Camera angles, music, sound effects, symbols, lighting, and acting skills all help to portray Saul's fear. Sladen Peltier's acting skills do a great job of portraying Saul's fear when being kidnapped, speaking with Father Queenie, and getting his braid cut. Serious and scary music was played as Saul gets kidnapped and enters St. Jerome's, showing the fear that Saul felt when entering the school. Close shots of Saul's face were used when getting kidnapped to show his fear. When first meeting Father Queenie, a low camera angle was used to show Father Queenie's status and power in St. Jerome's. Saul fears Father Quinney as he hesitates and stutters when responding to him. After Saul is forced to have his braids cut, he becomes sad and scared as his braids symbolize his culture. As Saul was practicing his hockey skills, a light was directed at the hockey rink while there was darkness surrounding it, symbolizing that hockey is not enough to forget the fears of St. Jerome's. For his good luck's acting skills to do a good job of portraying Saul's fear for playing his first white team and the fear he had for his teammates who got beaten up. The alleyway in which each teammate was beaten up was very dark showing the fear all players must have had at the time. Ajua Kapashisit's acting skills do a great job of portraying Saul's fear of playing in Toronto and Saul's change in morals with becoming a more aggressive player. Saul is reluctant in playing for Toronto as he fears undergoing continuous racism without Team Moose. Sad music is played when Saul starts acting like a savage, showing how racism has changed Saul into becoming a more aggressive player to retaliate against the racism. Film to novel comparison the first difference I found in the film was that detail and context were lacking compared to various details we were given in the novel. Many key events were either rushed over or completely missing, which enables the audience from having emotion for certain characters and the plot, destroying the delivery of the story. We were never given a proper introduction of Saul's blood family except for Naomi, disabling us from feeling sympathy for Benjamin's death and Saul for being abandoned. Although racism was portrayed, racism during Saul's hockey career was only prominent in a fraction of the games he played, while in the novel, racism was prominent in every game Saul played against white teams, 
The same link is from feeling the same amount of sympathy for Saul as we had felt for Saul in the novel. The film skips some of the aftermath of leaving Toronto, such as going to Manitowoc, Saul's aggression in Manitowoc, and why he became a wandering nomad. I think these changes were made to decrease the length of the film rather than provide a better plot, which hurts the film adaptation as there is less emotion being experienced when I viewed the film. These changes leave the audience who have not read the novel to make assumptions, which I do not think should be the case for a film adaptation as it's meant to provide a visual to an already existing story, not alter what's included in the story and what's not. The one thing I felt the film did great on is adding the thoughts of indigenous people who went through non-fictional stories at the beginning and end of the film. This gives us the sense that this story is not very different from residential school survivors' experiences, bringing back some of the emotion that had been missing throughout the film. For these reasons, I think this addition helped the film adaptation. In conclusion, I enjoyed the novel more, as there was more context and better storytelling. Final thoughts. I was disappointed by the outcome of this movie, giving the film a 6 out of 10. This is because the film failed in the delivery of the story by skipping or quickly skimming over certain moments in the plot. These key events that are missing or rushed over would have allowed the audience to connect and have sympathy for Saul. If I were ignorant to the problems indigenous people had to go through in the past and the effect it has on them now, I do not think I would have felt a lot of emotion for Saul, as I did not have enough time or context to build a true connection and gain an understanding of what indigenous people had to go through. If I were to change anything about the movie, I would forget about how long the movie will be and add the missing context for the audience. I believe that if the film was originally like this, the delivery of the story would be successful and complete making me rate it at least a 7.5 out of 10. The end.